My friends, today's video is gonna be centered around this laptop, the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. And I have to say, after spending the last few videos working on Ryzen laptops, this brand new Tiger Lake entry from Intel is a massive disappointment, not only in performance, but price. And honestly, the only redeeming factor about this laptop is the fact that it's an XPS. So let's go ahead and talk about this because I came into this review with a lot of high hopes. That's kind of where I was approaching Tiger Lake. We were seeing a lot of benchmarks come out beforehand that made it seem like this was gonna be a revolutionary step for Intel coming into the 11th gen. And after playing around with my spec XPS 13, which I happened to purchase myself. Dell did not send this out to me. You can get it in multiple different configurations, but my specific one came with the 11th gen i5 1135G7, which terrible name aside, it's four cores, eight threads, 2.4 gigahertz base, and a 4.2 gigahertz boost. You can optionally upgrade that to the i7, but that's only gonna give you a boost clock of 4.8 instead of 4.2, not gonna give you any more cores. You're getting the brand new Intel Iris Z graphics, which I was the most excited for with this. The base model comes with eight gigabytes of 4267 LPDDR4X memory, with it being upgradable to 16, which is at least another $200. Base model, again, 256 gig NVMe drive, upgradable to one terabyte. It's $100 extra to go to 512, and then it's an extra 250 to get up to that one terabyte. And it comes with a four cell 51 watt hour battery. So all of those specs are, are right. And the one I have here is the very base model coming in at $1,299. So you can fully kit this out to be closer to that $2,000 region, but this specific one is just that $1,300 model. So going over the XPS part of it before I complain about what Intel's brought to the scene here, Build quality, fantastic. Honestly, this is one of the most solidly constructed 13 inch laptops that I've ever held. The screen, it looks really great. It's a 13.4 inch, 16 by 10, full HD plus WLED touch display. It's 1900 by 1200 in resolution with an upgrade up to 3840 by 2400 for $300 extra and what they call Infinity Edge. It's got 90% of the DCI-P3 color space, a 1500 to one contrast ratio, 500 nit sprite, 0.65% anti-reflective coating and Gorilla Glass 6. So all around, this thing is constructed like a beast. I opted to get the frost exterior Arctic white externals because I thought that was gonna look really good and it was a $50 upgrade for that. But if you just wanna go base, it's the platinum silver exterior, black interior. And again, it's cut from two blocks of aluminum with that Gorilla Glass 6 holding it all together with the diamond cut finish and the carbon fiber on the interior. I cannot fault Dell for what they've made with this brand new XPS. Obviously, it lives up to the name of previous ones. The, the build quality and the structure of this are phenomenal. Rounding out the rest of the XPS 13 stuff, the keyboard, phenomenal. I love typing on it. It's so satisfying. It's short throw travel, but it actually gives you enough feedback that it feels substantial, even though it doesn't feel like it's traveling all that far. The touchpad's super smooth, works as well as you need it to. It's great for all functions. And the speakers in this thing are surprisingly loud, for the size of a 13 inch notebook. They're incredibly clear at the highs and mids, but lacking any sort of bass response, especially with there being no woofers in here, you wouldn't expect it. But some songs just end up sounding hollow as you're playing them because of the lack of the low end. The 720p webcam actually looks okay. The white balance kind of super off, especially in this shot. It doesn't do so bad in some other shots, but I've got, I've got orange syndrome going on right now. The microphone's actually surprisingly good at canceling stuff out. They're not the best sounding, but they're also not terrible. Camera is awful. Microphones are fine. It works for Zoom. Quickly, we can talk about I.O. as well. It comes with two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on either side. On the left side, you get the micro SD card reader. On the right-hand side, you get a headphone jack. So this actually is better than most mobile phones out there on the market these days. The I.O. is good. I had some personal problems with my drivers getting the USBs to work, but I think that's probably just because it's a early stage product and that should probably be resolved by the time you pick one up. But now let's go ahead and talk about what's under the hood here while the exterior is great what what dell has created here gets me incredibly jealous that i haven't tried out an xps previously 
the i5-1135G7. I was so excited to try that new Project Z graphics. I was so excited to see what Intel was bringing with 10 nanometers with their 11th gen. And I just have to say, it's anus. It's real bad, especially after being on Ryzen laptops for so long. I've tried out a Ryzen 5 4500U. In fact, this Flex 5 is my daily driver. This just has the Ryzen 5 4500U in here, no GPU. I've also tried out a 4700U, and I have to say, these stomp all over the Tiger Lake stuff. Whether it's in CPU performance, where the AMD chips outperform in Cinebench and rendering by the tune of 50% when it comes to using all cores, and it's at least as good or better in single core performance, or when it comes to gaming. My friends, I tried to play Fortnite at 720p medium on this thing, because that's what I've been benchmarking all of my other laptops at, and it barely averaged 39 FPS, barely. And it was so stuttery that I couldn't even say it was an enjoyable experience. I'm not a high refresh rate snob. I'm okay playing at 24 FPS as long as it's smooth, but the Z graphics drivers that are in this thing simply could not make the experience enjoyable. So it was a pain in the butt to even play the entire time. Compare that to this guy right here, which is half the cost of the XPS 13. Admittedly, there are some build quality differences. And I got 79 FPS average, 720p medium. I can even play at 1080p low and get better at frame rates than I can on the Tiger Lake graphics. Another disappointing aspect of the Dell XPS 13 is the battery. I actually didn't get that great of battery life. It's a four cell 51 watt hour battery and I got four hours and 15 minutes of active use out of this thing. Compare that again to my Flex 5, which has the same exact 51 watt hour battery and I was able to get five hours and 52 minutes, a near two hour difference from the AMD chip to the Intel chip, and the Intel chip performs worse. It's just sad to see how bad Intel is compared to AMD in the mobile form factor right now. The price to performance differential that I'm seeing here between the XPS 13 2 and one and my Lenovo Flex 5 isn't necessarily up to the fact that it's just the processors. Obviously, Dell has something to say when it comes to their build quality, their construction. This XPS 13 is just a cream of the crop when it comes to ultrabook form factors. I love the build so much, but I have to ask, why is there not a Ryzen 5 4500U option? It would be faster in CPU performance, it would be faster in gaming performance, and it has the same TDP. I don't understand why I have to purchase an Intel version of this, especially when the Intel option right now with 10th gen is so bad. It is just not good. I want to keep this XPS 13 2-in-1. I absolutely love this thing. I'm smitten with how good Dell has made this laptop, but I can't justify it because that i5 just underperforms terribly compared to the U-series options that are available from AMD. And that, for me, is the biggest deal breaker. This is a $1,300 laptop at base, and it performs at least 25%, if not 50% worse than my $600 Flex 5. And I just can't find a reason to switch at this point. I am looking for a new daily driver laptop, and this XPS 13 2-in-1, while I love what Dell has done, is just not gonna be it. I'm sticking with my Flex 5. So that's gonna be it for my look at the brand new Tiger Lake XPS 13 2-in-1 from Dell. Let me know what you think of these new Tiger Lake chips down below in the comments. I'm keen to hear, are you picking up one of the new ones from Dell or from HP or anybody else who's coming out with Tiger Lake? I'm keen to hear from you down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content, and I'll catch you in the next one.